Hey YouTubers, uh, today bringing you another video. Uh, this is a video that's giving you an update on me owning my upholstery business. So I do some car stuff, I do some upholstery stuff, I do some updates on my uh, business ownership. And so today I decided, today is um, August, oh, uh, August 22nd, 2019. And it is 9.50 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And as of today, I still have my business. I'm still building it up, trying to uh, get it up and running the way that I want to. Um, good news is, business is definitely growing. It is definitely growing. I'm getting more business. I'm getting steadier business. Uh, I, you know... I'm getting third person referrals uh, by that I mean I'm getting people calling me because of business that I've done with other people who referred me to them so these are people who I've never actually had any contact with um, they've just been referred to me by other people who I've done business with and they said well you know Trevor's trim shop is a good place to uh, get your work done getting seats done and headliners and things of that sort so that is really <clears throat> definitely a, a positive thing I, I love when I get a call from someone for their business and it's someone who I've never had any contact with you know it's just uh, purely a referral so that's always a great thing um, I have some paper here. I always write stuff down. I don't know if you watch my other videos, but I always, I can never stress enough, write stuff down, especially uh, if it's something that you need to plan for in the future so that you won't lose focus or forget uh, different aspects or you can edit it later on, you know, but I write stuff down all the time. Uh, so uh, right now, I am, some months are a little bit more, some months are a little bit less, but I'm averaging right at about a thousand dollars a month in revenue um, doing upholstery work that is after I buy the material for the jobs um, you know my I would say my my dirty profit you know my clean profit would be after all expenses but my dirty profit after you know I buy the material for the specific job and uh, I get paid I'm, I'm clearing about a thousand dollars a month some months it's a little bit more some months it's a little bit less but I'm I'm getting at a thousand dollars a month which for me um, my goal for the end of the year is to be at least at three thousand dollars a month so definitely some work to do there but I'm getting there you know there is progress um, I love what I do I definitely I'm very happy doing this you know it's it's enjoyable it's something that uh, it lets me explore my creative side so I, I definitely get to do that you know it's not the trudgery of just going into a factory and just doing robot work so I definitely enjoy that uh, it gives me freedom I go on vacation at least twice a year uh, completely irrelevant but at least I have the time off if I want that I can do that most jobs you get you know two weeks vacation and you have to kind of figure out what you're gonna do with that for me I can pretty much close my shop up for a week and take off you know and nobody's gonna say anything to me that's a double-edged sword we'll get a little bit more into that later on um, I can't stress enough how important business cards are you know I I kind of was having the business cards when I first got them but now I mean it's gotten to the point where when I'm walking out the door I look in my wallet and make sure I have at least five business cards usually more like ten every time I leave the house because you never know who you're gonna come across you never ever know who you're gonna come across who's gonna want your business or it could be a potential customer you know even if they sound like they're a hundred percent just flaky give them a business card you know the cost of that card is nothing compared to if they bring you business even if it's just the smallest project so i i always keep business cards on me at every given time you know and anytime you catch me outside the house i have business cards in my wallet 
I keep business cards in my car. I keep business cards in my truck. I keep them at the shop, you know. So business cards, very important, very good for networking, very good for potential business. Um, so that's always good. Um, another really nice thing is that I've had my YouTube viewers as well as um, friends and family, people on Facebook, very encouraging. You know, they're always... Uh, telling me how happy they are that I've chose this path and they're happy for me. Um, and that, that helps, you know, I mean, it doesn't, it's not something I depend on, but it's a really nice perk to know that there are people who are actually happy for me, uh, doing this. And so, you know, it's, it's nice to have that, that backing. It's, <clears throat> I think it would have been a lot different if I was in a, in a business where I had to, um, pretty much market to family, you know, and just go around harassing my families to buy and insurance from me and stuff like that. I, I think they would have treated me a little bit different. Um, but since I'm in a situation where I'm just off doing my own thing and they just know that, Hey, this is what Trevor is doing. Um, I think they're very encouraging. So, you know, they're, they're, they're encouraging from a distance and that's fine. You know, um, it's not all sunshine and roses. There are uh, definitely some downsides that I'm experiencing. Um, the first of them is that I work two full-time jobs. I work as a rideshare driver, which I'm probably going to make a video on that within the next month because uh, I have some things to say. I have an opinion on that. Um, but I do rideshare full-time, so I come out at 10 o'clock at night sometimes midnight and I work till six o'clock in the morning and then I come home and I go to sleep and then I get up at nine o'clock in the morning and I head to my shop at 10 so I'm heading over there right now and I'm going to be at the shop until six o'clock in the evening and then I go home well I come home I'm home now I come home eat dinner shower go to sleep and then I get up and do it again so I'm I'm working two full-time jobs and the reason is that I don't have wads of cash laying around to float me until this business uh, is up and running fully so I have my upholstery business and I'm there and I'm available for that and I'm doing that but I'm also doing rideshare to pay the bills in the interim so that I'm not sitting there wondering well how I'm gonna pay my rent this month or you know how I'm gonna pay for for my uh, workspace or anything like that so that the bills are paid um, through rideshare but it's getting to the point now you know where more of it is being paid by my upholstery business you know uh, when I first started out obviously a hundred percent of it was being paid by my other job and now it's gotten to the point where about 60 I would say maybe 70% of it is being paid by my other job and then the other 30-40% is being paid by the upholstery business. So there is definitely work to be done. Um, but this is what you have to do when you have a business. It's like having a little newborn baby and you have to nurture it and you have to be there and you have to nurse it and, and do everything for it. You know, a lot of times I see people uh, go into businesses with the mindset that uh, they're going to put their name on a storefront and all of a sudden they're CEO and just kick back and watch the money roll in. You know, that works on the Discovery Channel sometimes, but in real life, not so much. So, definitely working two full-time jobs is one of the downsides to this. You know, sometimes I'm in zombie mode. You know, sometimes it seems like all I ever do is work and sleep and then go back to work again and I lose track of time. But um, it's worth it because it's a means to an end. It's not like I'm just putting in a bunch of overtime for somebody else's job. I'm doing this for something that I want and it's something that I'm seeing grow. So I'm actually seeing results for my effort. And so there's that. So it's a bad thing, but it's a bad thing that's giving good results. Um, I would say to other people who are considering owning their own business, starting their own business, um, start at the bottom. Start small. You know, as small as is allowed in your particular field. You know, if you're going to start 
let's say you're gonna be a, a mechanic you know rent a, a sm the smallest possible space you know like a little two bay garage or even a one bay garage where maybe you can work on cars outside and then inside you know and, and uh go from there but you want to start as small as you want don't don't start out with these big googly eyes of you know i'm gonna just start out and have the biggest shop ever start out small um keep your overhead small until you build your business up until you see where you want to be because um you may realize that you don't even want your business to be as big as you thought you know you have more control you're able to micromanage a little better when it's smaller um and that may be better for you or you might want a good big but the point is when you start out small you have less things to worry about and you're less stressed every single uh, month about the bills coming in and being able to cover your expenses so that's always a factor um, the problem with uh, starting your own business is that you have to walk away from your regular job you can't do both uh, you have to pick a side you may not at first, like me right now, I'm straddling both sides, but it, there comes a point when you have to pick a side. And I've seen people who want to start a business and, you know, they're in their 50s and they're eight years away from retirement. You know, they have full retirement coming up. They got 401k and all that. And, you know, starting a business sounds enticing, but, you know, you have to deal with this as a reality. And the reality is that you may not want to walk away from that retirement. You may not want to get away from that 401k. You know, you spend a lot of time and a lot of effort into that. Just put in those eight more years, those five more years, finish what you got, and then think about starting a business. Because for me, I I had a 401k. I didn't really have a retirement, but, you know, it was minuscule. It was barely enough for me to move to Florida. So I didn't really care about that money. You know, it, it wasn't... It wasn't enough of a factor to keep me from starting a business. You have to weigh your options and see what it is that you're risking giving up to start your business. You know, I, I know there are people who will always tell you, well, give up whatever you want and pursue your dream. And uh, No, the reality, you have to sit down and really take stock of what it is that you're giving up and what it is that you want to gain for it and decide honestly. Don't, don't decide with your ego, don't decide with your heart, don't decide with what you see on motivational TV or whatever. You know, decide logically and realistically what it is that you're giving up and is it worth what you can potentially gain, you know, realistically. I mean, of course, you know, potentially you could probably become a billionaire, but realistically, you need to figure out what it is that you could potentially gain and is it worth giving up what you already have. So... Starting a business is a great thing, and I love it, and I would highly recommend it, but it's not for everyone, and it's not for every situation, so you have to really sit down and be honest with yourself. Um, also, so I, I said earlier that I have people who are encouraging. I also have people who are discouraging. I have people who are, you know, you always have people who always have something to say, always have something negative to say, you know. Um, and I even find this comes from uh, other family members, uh, more so than complete strangers. But, you know, you'd always have people who will say, uh, you know, I, you're not really working or what happens when it fails or what happens if you don't have money next month or, you know, all, all these things. And, you know, these are realistic concerns, but I already know about these things. OK, you don't have to keep bringing them up to me. You know, I'm, I'm not a child and I didn't just start doing this. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't know if they do it to make themselves feel better about the fact that they weren't willing to make uh, a decision like this or, you know, for whatever reason, it just wasn't feel feasible for them. But, you know, there are people who will be negative, um, but there are people who will be negative no matter what you do. Like if you came up with a cure for cancer, there are people who will blame you for overpopulating. There goes. That's just the way it is. You need to accept that there will always be negative people no matter what you do and you take it with a grain of salt and sometimes you have to sift through because there may be genuine criticisms but a lot of times it's uh jealousy or you know uh people who sometimes people are just afraid of you succeeding you know they might have at one time wanted to start a business and they didn't and watching you succeed 
is a painful thing for them, you know, because every time that they watch you do something that's a milestone, that's something that they could have done and they should have done and they didn't do, especially if it's something, if they wanted to start a business long before you did, you know, then they're thinking, well, I would have been way ahead of this person right now had I done it. And that can be a, a point of contention. You know, it may, it may cause you to have enemies where you normally wouldn't have enemies, not enemies like they want to stab you in the back or anything, but you know, they're just, they got slick tongues. They, they got slick tongues whenever they talk to you, you know, they'll talk to you a certain kind of way and you can tell it, it gets obvious. Um, now, another part of having a small business, me having my own small business is that everybody wants a deal every single person i have not yet had one single person where i gave them a quote on a on um a project and they're like okay great let's do it they always want to see if they could get you know a 50 dollars off or a hundred dollars off or 200 dollars. they always want to get a deal and um it gets annoying it definitely gets annoying, but starting my business out and starting from the bottom, a lot of times I give people deals, um, which, you know, sometimes I give more of a deal than I should. But it always comes to that point of no return, uh, where literally there is no return. And you have to sit down and say, well, you know, if I do this business for this person at the price that they're asking, am I going to make a profit? Because this is business 101, is the exchange of goods and services for a profit. If you're not making a profit, you may as well not do any business. If someone is offering you their business and they're, you know, and I hear this all the time, especially from little car, uh, used car dealerships, they're like, well, I'm going to bring you lots of business and I'm going to have do business with you all the time. They might, they might not. I'm not saying that they won't, but if they're going to bring you business at a cost where you cannot make a profit, I'm not in business just because I really like to work, okay? If that's the case, there are lots of things I would rather do. I'd rather be tinker tinkering on my car, or riding my motorcycle, or you know, fishing or stuff like that. I am not in the business purely because I really, really, really like to work. That is not my purpose in my business. I am in business to make a profit. So if you're offering me a lot of business, but not at a price where I can make a profit, I will have to decline your business. I will politely, with a smile, decline your business. Simply because, um, and I've, I've said this many, many times, even way back when I used to do mechanic work, if you lose a customer who doesn't want to pay you, you've lost absolutely nothing. And I will say it again, if you lose a customer who doesn't want to pay you, You've lost absolutely nothing. And I mean that there are customers who will cut the price down to the point where when you consider your gas and the cost of material and the cost of running the shop for the period of time that it's going to take to do the job and the loss of opportunity to do jobs that will actually pay when you consider all these things, you're doing their job at a loss or a break even or at such a minuscule profit that it's not even worth it. You know, you need to think, <clears throat> if I do this job, you know, and the time it's gonna take, and it's gonna turn out to be what, like three bucks an hour? And then the problem with that is that if you do the job at X price, and then you come back the next week and he brings you another job, he's not gonna pay you more the next time, okay? He's gonna want it at the exact same price that he did it the first time, and then he's going to want maybe another discount. And so it's going to be even less money. So you need to always be uh, aware of jobs that aren't really jobs. They're just people wanting you to work for free because a lot of them come by. I think I would, about half of my customers are trying to get me to work at a point where it's not even worth me opening my shop. Um, the uh, the last downside that I would like to touch on as far as this is there is no safety net. So there is no boss saying, hey, you know, I know you worked really hard this week. Business was slow, but here's a hundred bucks. There is no um, 
well, I was sick with the flu for four days, but, you know, I'm going to get sick pay. There is no vacation pay. There is no 401k. There is nothing like that. I work. I make money. I don't work. I don't make money. There is no safety net. Um, and so, you know, that's definitely a downside that you need to keep in the back of your mind if you want to start your own business. Other than that, you know, that's all I have for today. Um, so... If you've watched my other videos, you see that I work on a Ford Focus. That is my personal car. Um, got, I got into an accident with it uh, 2nd of July. Um, and I was using it for rideshare, so I haven't been able to do that uh, for about a month and a half. But I'm in the market for another vehicle, so when I start car hunting, I will definitely make a video on that. Um, so the video on rideshare is to come. The video on car hunting is to come um, and I think that's about it you know just uh, working the business sewing up those seats um, most of my I would say my bread and butter is car seat repair and headliners like I gotta go do a headliner right now when I leave here um, I do get some home furnishing and drape work you know the drape work is seasonal you know you get Easter and, and and Thanksgiving is coming up hopefully I'll get some work with that I'm not turning anything down um, but you know it's going good I'm definitely happy with this decision it's not easy by any stretch of the imagination I'm not gonna lie to you and glamorize it and say oh you know I'm making loads of cash and the money's just flowing in and and business is fantastic no it's hard work and right now it's small results but it's definitely bigger results than it was six months ago and hopefully six months from now it'll be even bigger results you know I'm just I'm really excited for the day when I can say I don't have to work any other jobs I don't have to do uh, ride share anything like that and this is my sole source of income and I am officially in my own business 100% that is the goal that I'm shooting for but by the end of this year I want to be making at least $3,000 a month doing a poultry business. So at the end of the year, I'll let you know how close I am to that. You know, I, I like I said, I would really like to be at 3,000, but I'm, I'm a realistic kind of guy. So, you know, we'll see how close I get to that. All right. So thanks guys. Have a great week. Bye.